right guys, today we're gonna to start working on this bottom part of the field and cleaning up this mess right here. I've never touched this area since we've owned it. We bought this place about four years ago. And I believe it's about time to start cleaning this up down here and make it look a lot better. Got some cedar trees to work through, got some old fencing to take out. And hopefully it's gonna be dry enough over there that the tractors won't sink. I better go walk on it first. Go ahead and start cutting down some of this barbed wire, getting it out of the way. Most of it's already on the ground. It's not too bad today. I think we'll be okay. The 754 weighs about 8,000 pounds. I don't think it will sink in here. Might make some ruts, but that'd be about it. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this barbed wire and then we'll get the tractor and start pulling these posts out of the ground. And then we'll get in there and start cutting that stuff down. We'll use the lane shark and the flail mower both today to clean this up. So using a new tool today, friends, this is made by Nipetch. It's a German company. I have a lot of their pliers and their channel lots, but this is for cutting fence wire. And my buddy Evan over at Country View Acres, he recommended this in a video it works really good. I've been using it here for about the past month and it does a good job. This is expensive, but buy once, cry once, guys. I tell you what, I like paying for quality tools because they last a lot longer than that cheap stuff you find at Harbor Freight. Although some stuff at Harbor Freight ain't that bad. I shouldn't say that, I guess. Some of their stuff is decent, but when it comes to hand tools like this, you gotta pay more and get something that's gonna last a long time. So I'll leave a link down below like I always do. I got this on Amazon. It's pretty expensive, but if you're putting up any fencing or taking fencing down, it makes fast work of it. Stuff is a mess, guys. I tell you what, it was like this when we bought the place. I should have done this a year ago. how loose that is that one's pretty loose too let's cut the wire off of it got some more fence in this cedar tree right here we're going to take the lane shark here in a few minutes and start on this tree and go straight down and see if it could chop the whole thing up it should be able to handle it. Look at there. That one pulled right out. I could hear the water down there in the bottom of it. See the diameter right there. 
it's a lot thicker at the bottom that's a lot better than just cutting it down with a chainsaw it kind of shreds everything up and leaves it on the ground I think I'm going to back up just a little and kind of ease into it because that bottom right there may be thicker than the lane shark can handle I can't see the stump that's the problem I think this thing is good for a, a three inch tree I'll have to check and make sure on that if I'm wrong, I'll put it right here in the video, but I think that's the diameter. And it's so thick down in there, I can't tell. So what we'll do is we'll just ease up on this thing and start taking off chunks all the way around it until we get rid of it. We may have to cut the bottom with the chainsaw. That's a lot better than sitting here trying to piece this out. First of all, for those of you that always say my tractors look clean, you must never work them. Well, there you go. Got pretty muddy today, but I'll get the pressure washer out tomorrow and clean that off. All right, so the lane shark worked pretty good. Had no issues right there. Everything I tried to cut with it, it cut with no problem. And if you kind of heard on the video there, I don't know if it will come through or not. Whenever I move my hydraulics up and down, it does affect the RPMs on the lane chart just a little. You can hear it kind of speed up and speed down, if that makes any sense. You can hear it kind of slow down and then speed back up when I let off my hydraulics. It doesn't affect the cut, though. It still went through everything I needed to do, but that is something you got to look for when running that thing on my machine. So here is the problem, and this is why I'm probably going to stop right here for the day. As you can see, those ruts right there are pretty deep. That one's about maybe a foot deep, and this one over here is two foot deep. There's no good way to put this. This is just a wet area. This is the bottom of two different fields. You got my front hay field right here. All the water comes down. It collects in that creek and overflows into here. And right here on my neighbor's side, he's got a lot of French drains over here on his driveway that come down. And just everything comes all the way down into this little area right here and eventually goes to the creek but a lot of it stays right here, and that's why it stays so wet. But I do have a strategy, or I just came up with a strategy on how we can maybe fix this. So I called Mike Morgan over at Outdoors at the Morgans. I'm sure you guys are familiar with him. He's moved a lot of dirt in his life. I've not moved a lot of dirt in my life, so I always call a friend when I can't figure out how to do something. And here's what he suggests. He says I should put a French drain, let me see, right there on that line and pretty much have a T coming off of it, coming over here to the creek or the stream or whatever you want to call that. I think it's a stream. It don't have water in it unless it's been raining. So he says that should dry up this area. And then I'm thinking once it gets dried out a little bit, come in here with some good slate and try to build it up and pack it in real good. But I'm not sure my tractor is the best machine to do that. I'll probably need a skid steer for that, a track skid steer. That's what I would need to come in here and really pack it down. I can use my backhoe on the 574 to put in the drains, though. That'll be no problem. So I think that's going to be the best solution. If anybody out there has a better solution than that, let me know in the comments below, because like I was saying earlier, 
I've not done a lot of dirt work in my life, and this is kind of new to me, and I'm trying to figure out how to dry out this area. That's my goal. I want to get this whole area right here dried out so I can use it for either storage, maybe put logs down here, maybe let some cows come down here. I don't know, for something, you know, which is what it's used for right now, which is just a swamp. So I need it to be useful. Something else I'm going to try here before we call it a day, I'm getting the 574 with the flail mower. And this right here is not as wet as over there. I think I can back in right there and go over there close to the creek where the tracker is and maybe clean a lot of that up with the flail mower. The 574 is not nowhere near as heavy as the 754. Well, looky there, friends. The hatefulest cat on YouTube. Hello, mama. You better be careful down there. That's where those turtles are hiding. Those things are bigger than you. friends what do y'all think that flail mower never disappoints i tell you what it done a really good job of grinding up all the stuff that the lane shark took down i may try to get over here just a little bit with it and start working on this stuff as well but i think i have enough room i can back up next to the stream which is right over there and start working on all this and getting rid of it this tractor weighs about 3,000 pounds less than the 754. 